Hello everyone, my name is Igor. I am from Kishinev, the Republic of Moldova. I am a chemistry teacher at Ebiche Coaching. Today we shall discuss the topic separating methods for grade 10. Let's talk about separating a solid from a liquid. Which method should we use? Today we shall study three methods of separating a solid from a liquid. You probably met ordinary table salt and a refined one. Let's look at the pictures. Ordinary table salt may be of a grayish tone. while the refined one is always snow white, as you can see in the picture. What do you think? How those two types of table salt have been obtained? Yes, that's right. Let's look at the two other pictures. The ordinary table salt is usually obtained from two different natural sources, from underground mines and from sea water, while the refined salt is obtained by purification of the ordinary salt. Let's now look at the video. Salt. It's an ingredient that can make food go from drab to delicious. At our salt refinery, we do the same for the salt itself. Hi, I'm John. Let me show you how we turn these chunks into our final products. Our salt is evaporated from ocean water in 1,000 hectares of salt fields. It can take more than a year for the salt to go from liquid seawater to the solid sodium chloride we work with. We first need to take the large chunks that have been harvested and give them a wash. We actually use treated seawater for this step because the fresh water would dissolve away some of the salt. Washing it gets rid of some nutrients and minerals like calcium and magnesium that were left behind in the evaporation process. Next, the salt is stacked and left for an entire year. During this time, rainwater continues the washing process. Why is it okay to use fresh water now? Well, magnesium dissolves more easily into water than sodium chloride. So as drops of water flow over the salt, they pick up some magnesium and carry it away, leaving the salt behind. After that, we transport the salt to the refinery, where, believe it or not, it's time for another wash. It's time we're back to using seawater, and this last wash is just one last chance to get rid of leftover minerals and waste. Once that's done, the salt is poured into a cylindrical dryer. This is called a rotating drum kiln, which we heat by burning gas. As the cylinder containing the salt turns, the salt slowly dries and flows out the other end. So now we're left with clean, dry salt, but the pieces are just a bit too big. Feed the salt in between stainless steel rollers to crush it into smaller particles. Pass it through screens that only let the correct size grains pass through. We use different rollers and screens to crush the salt into different sizes. There are heaps of different uses for this salt to go along with the different sizes. For example, the very finest salt is used in manufacturing cheese and chocolate. Grains of a millimetre or two across would be familiar to most people as a type of salt that we use to season our food. And the larger chunks are great to use in salt water swimming pools. So all that's left is to package the salt up. And since we package 500 tonnes per day, there's still plenty to do. As you could see from the video, there are different separation methods used in table salt refinery. In order to understand in order to ease our understanding of table salt purification, let's imagine that we purify table salt in a laboratory or in our kitchen. Which separation method should we use then? The first method is called filtration. Let's look at another video. For this experiment, you'll need a sample of salt mixed with sand a stirring rod, some filter paper, a filter funnel, a conical flask, an evaporating dish and a beaker. 
take a sample of the sand and salt and get some water stirring with the stirring rod to mix them together. So the lady has dissolved the mixture in water, the salt has dissolved in water while sand remained undissolved. So now she is going to separate them by filtration. Mix it together thoroughly. This will help to dissolve the salt. Next, take the filter paper, fold it in half, fold it into quarters. Just doing this one handed, so it won't be the neatest job. Take it. One side on one and three on the other so that you can pop it into your filter. One more. Ooh. Go into the conical flask. Then you want to pour your mixture of sand and salt into the filter pan. Try and get it all in. Now, what's left in the filter paper here, that is called the residue. And what's come through, that's the filtrate. As you could see from the video, the salt water completely went from the filter, while the sand completely remained on the filter. So, was we completely separated salt from sand. And what next? We need to remove the water phase from the solution in order to separate salt from water. Notice I'm not poking the filter paper with my stirring rod. I'm just letting it gradually come out. So I can take that out. leave it to dry and then I'll have my separated sand and then I will take my conical flask and pour it into the evaporating dish where I will leave that on the side so the water can evaporate and the salt will be left behind which we can look at at our next lesson. Let's look at another video. We can evaporate water from the salt faster by heating the solution and another video shows how to do that. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you what happens if you evaporate this on the hot plate and what you can possibly hear right now is that the salt water is getting inside the hot plate and it's getting quite quite hot and it is boiling. And as it is boiling, it is bubbling. And steam is coming off. And what this will do is it will leave the salt residue behind. So we are going to start the timer. I'll tell you the Okay. Here we go, we're going to start. Okay, uh, 10 minutes has elapsed, has gone by, and we have half of the water level remaining. And you will slowly start to see a ring of salt start it to form around the edges. And if I take my continuing pointer here, you can see that there's this little salt ring on this side. So we're going to check back in a couple more minutes when more water has evaporated. It takes a lot longer on a hot plate than it does with a bump and burn. Okay, now we are at 16 minutes. And you can start to really see the salt rings forming around the outside. I'll try my best to capture that on the video for you. Here is 
one big ring of salt, and another big ring of salt. So it's just going to continue to go on and on and on. Back after a little bit more time and on by. Okay, time lapse to 20 minutes. And what you see here is all of the water has evaporated and it leaves the salt behind. So, uh as you can see from the video, it takes about 20 minutes to completely evaporate water on the evaporating dish. So it is much faster than just to leave it on the table. On the table. And now what we can see, the, the salt is completely separated from the sand and the similar processes take place take place in industrial uh, table salt refinery. And if you take a look, I can scrape a little bit off. You can see how the salt collects, leaving the opposite of solubility. This is extracting and evaporating off solvent and having salt remain behind. So we have a separated mixture. Here's the original salt. This is salt. And the salt that you get at the market is that this one is not granular, so it's not in a big block. Okay, that's what we have. Voila, salt.